All right. Um, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, it's at the right time right now. So thank you all for joining the workshop. Uh, and, it, and of course, as if you come on um, as we go along, that's totally fine. You know, you can join at any time. Uh, this is the KSQL, KSQL DB workshop uh, around data transformation and stream processing. So it's, it's kind of a little bit more mid-level one, uh, but I think it's one of our more interesting uh, KSQL DB workshops. Um, joining me is Johnny Mirza. Johnny, if you want to say hello and introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, David. Um, so yeah, my name is Johnny Mirza. I'm a solutions engineer working at um, Confluent and uh, looking forward to running this uh, workshop uh, with you today. So I'm going to try and run that uh, more in an interactive mode. So hopefully you can follow along as well. So um, thanks, David. Great. Thanks, Johnny. And uh, my name is David Peterson. I am the solutions engineering manager for the ANZ region. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, I'll be just doing a few things right now. Um, just briefly, uh, the Kafka Summit has kicked off. So it started uh, early our morning. Uh, it's going to be today and tomorrow. So please, uh, it's free to join. Uh, there's tons of sessions, two-day program, lots of really good announcements and a lot of really great talks. So you know, please go to the Kafka Summit uh, site and, and take a look. Uh, the agenda. So we did the welcome. Um, we'll jump straight into the quick start uh, so that you can get your clusters launched and create your KSQL DB instances. Uh, then we'll jump back to uh, an overview of Kafka and KSQL DB. That's the part that I'll be running through. And then we'll jump back to the workshop. Uh, hopefully, uh, sometimes it takes a little, a few extra minutes to, to get some of the KSQL DB uh, components uh, up and running after you click uh, start. Uh, and then we'll have a hopefully time for a Q&A at the very end. So um, briefly, uh, these are some of the instructions for signing up for a cloud account. So I put these links into the chat room so you can copy paste them. But uh, again, you should uh, go there. Um, these are free to run. So unfortunately, uh, you do need to enter your credit card information, but it's, it's just a placeholder. Uh, and of course you can cancel, uh, you get $200 in free credit um, and running through this workshop today, it should maybe use five or six dollars of that, or maybe ten dollars of that credit. Uh, and we'll remind you all to, um, you know, spin down your instances when you're done. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I also have the you get two hundred dollars free credit, of course. So it should last you uh, at least a month, if not longer. Uh, and then there is also the lab guide, but I put that into the chat window. So I'm gonna switch over to this. Um, actually, I might just go ahead. Uh, Johnny, would you prefer to share your screen or do you want to run through these slides? Oops, sorry, I was on mute. I think we'll just run through the, the slides actually just to get, get started. Um, yeah, it's quite it's quite simple actually, but let me, yeah, if you can just continue on. But essentially, if you, if you can click on the link that David provided in the um, in the chat window, so basically confluent.io and then it's got confluent-cloud and then try for free. That will take you to the Confluent Cloud welcome page over there. Um, I'll just uh, kind of, yeah, if you guys wanted to do that, and then maybe if you wanted to put your hand up, so you're okay with all of that, uh, if there's any questions. But yeah, it's just essentially going through that Confluent Cloud website and um, going through that sign up registration page there. All right. So um, once you've gone through that, I'll just give you a second to do it. And I'll walk you through this process as well again, but we'll just go through the slides. Uh, but what we're going to do is once we've uh, set up the, you've got your username and password, that's all configured. Um, and I'll probably take you through that after these slides as well, after these intro slides. Um, what that'll do is we're going to set up a new environment and I'll talk you through what that environment looks like. But Think of an environment as a logical grouping of your Kafka clusters. So it could be, in this case, it's KSQL DB workshop, but it could be dev, it could be staging, it could be production. So whatever that environment looks like. Um, so that's what we're going to create there. Uh, just to the next slide, David. Um, yeah. All right. And then the next part is, and I might share my screen from here, David, if that's okay. Just. Um, take over the, the screen share. We're going to do a little bit of back and forth, but it should be okay. So um, <clears throat> what I'll do is uh, just uh, take over the screen share for a second. Uh, 
Okay. I'm actually running, if you guys can see that, I'm, I'm actually running the workshop on the left-hand side of the screen. I thought this format's probably a bit better because I'll run through the workshop with you. Um, so that way, when we when we log into um, each, each activity that we do, we can walk through that together and then we can all um, be on the same page and make sure that everybody's following along as well. So essentially, when you go to the sign up page, so it's basically clicking on this link. So sign up and try for free. I'll just open that in a new window. And that will take you through to the sign up process, which of course I've already done. Um, but if you if you um, need to go through that, basically go ahead and enter your details in there. So your name, your organization, the country, all those details. <clears throat> and then as soon as you click next, it'll take you to the, the paywall piece where you do have to enter a, a credit card or a debit card uh, just to just to put in as a placeholder. Um, you're not going to get charged. You get $200 worth of free credits and we're going to spin down everything we do today. So after the, you know, five or $6 of that credit that we use today, you'll, you'll still have, you know, a fair bit of credit to use afterwards. Um, so once you've done that, you'll get an email, to verify your account. Um, and then the next stage is to log in. So this is the login page. So once you've verified your email address, uh, it'll take you to a page like this where it says well, Comfort Cloud. And then basically you're into your user ID, which is your email address. And then obviously go next to that point. And then the password that you chose as the sign up piece there as well. So obviously I've done this um, all before. But if I click next, you'll be able to see um, the welcome screen to Comfort Cloud. All right. So now um, if you're brand new to Confluent Cloud and you've just signed in, um, you know, we've, as David mentioned, we've launched Kafka Summit today and there's a, there's a bunch of new features and uh, functionalities and, and things that are, gonna, that are gonna pop up on your screen. So you'll get tutorials, you get um, how-to pages and intros. Um, please feel free to, to go through some of those or you can skip them for now and, and come back to that at a later stage after this demo. Uh, but they're pretty handy tutorials that will get you through how to set up a topic and how to navigate through the UI. Um, but what we're going to do is we've signed into Confluent Cloud, which kind of looks like that. And then just following these steps, we're going to set up a new environment. Um, in that case, if I go to environments over here, you see I can, I've got one called default. You can add another cloud environment. But um, in this case, it will go through to add environment. And I'll call this ksql db underscore workshop. Example. And now I've got this new environment. Um, and now that the environment's created, think of this as a logical cluster, a logical um, placeholder for all of your Kafka clusters. The next step we're going to do here is we're going to create a new cluster. Um, you can do that with the tutorial, as I mentioned, uh, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're just gonna create it using my own cluster. So if you click on create cluster on my own and click on that button, you'll have three options here. So there's basic, which is for what we're doing today, dev test and staging and, and working and playing around with new use cases, for example. Um, there's more of a standard cluster, which has uh, better limits and, and better sort of um, increased usability functions, including partitions and a bunch of limits and um, resources that utilizations are really good for sort of production use cases or dev or test or staging use cases, or if you want to scale up sort of thing, you can, you can uh, quickly spin up a, a standard cluster. And for the more serious workloads, I guess, you can have um, a dedicated cluster. Uh, and the way we size this dedicated cluster is what we call um, a Confluent uh, Kafka unit, a CKU. And you can think of this as a, a bunch of all the components that are needed to make up Kafka all bundled into a single CKU and a uh, pay-as-you-go hourly usage cost there as well. And this can be scaled up to quite a many, quite a few CKUs and scaled back down very, very soon as well. But in this case, we're just going to go through basic cluster. So I'll click on basic uh, and then go begin configuration. And then from here, we're across all three of the cloud providers. So it literally doesn't matter. You can select the cloud provider of your choice. Uh, in whatever region. So I'll just leave it in Google Cloud in Las Vegas. I'm going to leave it in single zone because I don't need the, the multi-zone availability there. Uh, and then I'm just going to click continue. And you can give the cluster a name and we're going to give the name called ksql Lab, uh, and then launch that cluster. 
And, and there we go. So now we have this class style that's being launched. Um, you may get your tutorial and uh, the, the pop-ups there as well, but this is as simple as that. We've just spun up a, a Kafka as a service, essentially cluster that's running within the cloud. Um, if you guys are still following along, the next step, which is what I want to do before I hand back to David, is um, we're gonna we'll go through the rest of the topics during the, the rest of the menu through the tutorial, but I just want to get to the KSQL DB section here. So if you click on KSQL DB, just navigate to that that button there. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new KSQL DB application. Um, so we're going to create it myself again. Uh, once again, you can play around with the tutorial later on. So I'll click on create KSQL DB application and. Um, so we're going to select global access in this case. You can limit this access and have a more sort of service account and more granular access, but we're just going to stick to global access. Click on continue. Um, we'll give this KSQL DB application a name. Um, keep it really simple, KSQL DB. It could be anything you want, but we'll call it KSQL DB. And I won't get into this too much, but essentially there's different sizes of um, KSQL DB compute. And uh, the more compute, obviously, the, the more it, it will cost to run because there's more compute processing under the power. But we'll leave that application size as four, uh, which is a conflict streaming unit, and click on launch cluster. Um, and uh, this little bit takes a, a little bit of time to run. So if you guys have done that correctly, you can see that it'll be provisioning. Uh, I will uh, hand back to David, sorry, David, and we'll come back to this <coughs> section once that's, that's fully provisioned. Great, thanks, Johnny. Uh, and yeah, so while KSQL DB is provisioning and launching, um, I will jump back to the rest of the presentation. This, is, this will probably take about 10 minutes or so. Uh, and then uh, hopefully uh, before that time is over, the all of your KSQL DB apps will be ready to go. And then Johnny will finish the workshop. <clears throat> uh, so what is Kafka? Uh, at, at its core, Apache Kafka is uh, kind of three key components. And it's really the ability to publish and subscribe, uh, the ability to store those events and those messages uh, for as little or as long as you want, even, you know, even for in infinite, uh, if, if you'd like. Uh, and then lastly, processing. Uh, of course, uh, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about KSQL DB processing, but you also have the ability to write your own custom uh, like, uh, uh, um, programs using case streams. So that's a, it's got a bit of a lower level library uh, at the like the JVM type level, very powerful. And KSQL DB is built on top of that really powerful library, but it allows you to uh, you know, write things with just SQL text, which is really powerful and much more easily attainable. Um, and again, at the core, uh, Apache Kafka is a distributed commit log. And what does that mean? It basically, it means that as these events are created and these pieces of data are created, they're uh, emitted into a topic, and that topic is an immutable stream of, of, of messages that get appended at the end. Um, that is, uh, again, a very powerful mechanism because it allows it to scale from a production and, consu and consumer side of things. It also allows, because we're sort of using the core file systems and core memory systems, uh, it's very fast. Uh, and, and also it allows us to have very high resiliency because it's a, uh, a clustering system that's architected across usually multiple data centers, multiple availability zones. So you can create uh, very you know, high resilient uh, RTO, RPO zero type applications on that. And then at the core, uh, Kafka is built on literally two APIs, the producer API and the consumer API. And so everything is either producing information into Kafka or consuming information from Kafka. So again, it's a very high level overview. Um, additionally to that, uh, Kafka is built, uh, has the Connect uh, ecosystem. So the Kafka Connect ecosystem. And there are hundreds of connectors that allow you to really quickly onboard new data sources or bring on um, you know, either sourcing data or syncing data. And um, in the workshop that you'll be going into, you'll be seeing some of those connectors and you'll be running a, a data gen connector. And that's just a, a connector that allows you, of course, to produce sort of like test data uh, at scale and choose different da data sources. Uh, and you'll see that later. And so the power of KSQL DB really comes on in, in this sort of, you know, the shift into real time. So you have 
uh, information coming from many, many different sources. Uh, and generally, you know, there's kind of current or previous ways of building things. There'd be sort of a more of a point to point kind of uh, style of building it. But what, we, what we're seeing more and more is by combining those things in real time, by joining, by filtering, by unioning and things like that, you know, you can actually do much more powerful experiences, which again, you'll see very soon. Uh, so here's just an example of some some you know, basic uh, banking app. You've got in one banking app, you've got customer data, um, security data, geolocation, transaction, payment data, all coming together in one place. Um, and so uh, within case of DB, there's kind of three um, key features that it provides. So one is filtering. So here, what you can see is you have um, information that's coming in and you are uh, filtering out anything that's less than 41 uh, as a sensor reading. Uh, so again, these are things that you can do all do in real time. Another one is join. So this is where you're taking a table and joining it to a stream. And so here you can see um, we're basically joining again in real time uh, information from two different um, data sources. Uh, and it's being joined on uh, the sensor uh, ID in both of them. And then lastly, aggregation uh, is another key one. This is where we are doing um, uh, kind of uh, stateful transformations to kind of get average readings over time. And there's kind of two fundamental query types, and you'll see those in the in the workshop soon. Um, there's a notion of a stream uh, query type, and this has been available in KSQL DB um, by default. Uh, what it means is. As you can see here, um, data is flowing in. So we have a vehicle ID with latitude and longitude. And you'll actually see vehicle ID being repeated. Um, that's because these are single events that are being sent out maybe every second or every you know, 500 milliseconds. And it's a stream that you, uh, so you're writing a query and you're getting a stream of data sent back to your application. Um, so that's what we call a streaming query or a push query. Um, and then the other one is the more traditional one that we're very familiar with, which we call pull queries. This is where you have a table. Um, and then that table, as you can see here, rather than being that stream where you're getting kind of new rows every time, um, this is your table is effectively updating in real time as the, um, as the data, as, the, as those events are flowing in. So it's the same exact data that's flowing in, but you're representing, representing it as a table. And that means that you can now do your traditional queries uh, pull queries, and you can say, um, I need the current uh, latitude and longitude for vehicle ID A1RC4R. And at that exact moment that you do run that query, you'll get that latitude and longitude at that car's at, at right now. And if you do the query again in another minute or another 30 seconds, you'll get the exact latitude and longitude of where that's at right now. So that works really well as a like for rest, pro, uh, restful interfaces and things like that, where you need to do a, 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 a quick query to get um, some information on, on potentially like one vehicle ID, for instance. Um, so again, I know that was a very brief overview because we want to keep most of the rest of the time to the workshop. So uh, a lot of the concepts that I just touched on, uh, you will see in much more detail with uh, Johnny. So I'm just going to jump back to the workshop here. Um, and let me stop sharing. And then Johnny will join back again. Perfect. Thank you, David. That was that was a really good intro. Um, so yeah, just to jump back into the workshop, I'll uh, I'll get back onto my screen. I'll do some screen sharing. You guys can see that. Okay. And oh, I was just going to add too. And and please let us know if anybody, if your KSQL DB instances are still. Um, I guess John, if you want to just refresh that, hopefully yours is is good. Um, they do. We did. I did, we did a lot of timing earlier today and yesterday, and we noticed sometimes it'd be about four or five minutes, and sometimes eight or nine minutes. And so this one is up and running. So um, please, I'll meet myself. I'll meet myself now. But in the chat room, please message me if you're having any issues or any questions. Awesome. Thank you, David. Yeah. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time. You might have to refresh your screen, but now you can see my KSQL DB application is up and running, um, and that was great timing uh, to to go through some intros. Um, Excellent. So now that we've uh, we've got KSQL DB running, we've got access to Confluent Cloud. We've created a basic Confluent cluster, and so we've got it all set in an environment as well. Um, the next step is to continue on with the uh, the walkthrough, and um, 
and then take a look at how we can start to use KSQL DB to run some real-time streaming, um, ETL, and potentially look at some fraud detection as well on a particular use case towards the end. Um, so just going through the tutorial, if you're following along, uh, great. If, if you're not, then I will also be running this at the same time. So you can still follow along um, and see me do this as well. And you can have this as a recording to, to refer back to later on. But what we're going to do is we're just going to click on um, the navigation menu. We'll click on cluster overview. And basically, it's just going to give us an overview, a welcome page. How do you add a, a fully managed connector? How do you configure any other clients that are essentially non-Java or Scala related, but you might have a Python or a Node.js or a Go client that you want to configure. Um, so just some, a little welcome note on that. And then you can start to see some, um, some throughput metrics being produced and some, um, some production and consumption, some storage metrics, uh, high level sort of overview of your Confluent environment, Kafka environment. All right, so the next step is we're going to click on cluster settings. Um, and this is where we start to find a bit more detail about the brokers itself. So the bootstrap server, you can see it's a Confluent Cloud URL there with the uh, traditional 9092 Kafka broker point, the REST endpoint as well for, uh, for any sort of REST admin type commands, um, where it's hosted, what it's, uh, what type of, um, what, what zone it's hosted in, for example, the cluster type, um, and there's even this option, option to upgrade to um, uh, a standard uh, cluster as well, which will do that automatically. So the next step is we're going to create a new topic. So if we go to uh, the topics menu over here and uh, we're just going to add a new topic. So click on new topic and the topic we're going to create is called the users topic. And I'm just going to copy and paste that. And we'll keep this really simple. We'll have one partition because obviously there's not going to be massive load on this users topic uh, today. Um, and there's also some customized settings. There's, there's a whole bunch of settings that you can customize in the document that can be found here that has uh, a lot more details on how to customize your topics. Uh, but we're just going to create this with the defaults. So click create with defaults. And then you can start to see um, the topic's been created. There's no data obviously being consumed in this particular topic yet, produced into the topic. Um, but it gives us that high level overview. We'll be able to see the messages, the schema, and the configuration related to that topic there as well. So you can go through and say, show me the full configuration. Um, there's a whole bunch of, bunch of settings there that can be, uh, that can be edited um, as per requirements. All right, excellent. So now we're going to follow that uh, tutorial again, and we're going to add another topic. So navigate back to topics, and then click Add Topic again. And this time, we're going to add a topic called uh, users topic. Well, let me take a step back. Is that what I just created? Sorry, my bad. It was meant to be, um, sorry, stocks topic. My bad, I just uh, went through it a little bit too quickly. It, we already created the users topic. We're creating this topic here in step number five um, called the stocks topic. And once again, with one partition, we're going to do that and create that with detail, with the default options there. All right, excellent. So, so now we have two topics in the list that we've created. Um, and obviously this one here is the KSQL DB processing log, which, um, which is a default type topic. But these are the two topics that we've created for this tutorial. Okay, the, uh, so the next step is now that we've created two topics, two essentially containers um, where we're gonna place information. Um, the next thing that's really important from a Confluent perspective and how it makes um, Kafka usability a little bit different is how to interact with the topics using API keys. So following this tutorial, we're going to go down to um, data integrations. This menu has changed a little bit. So it's under data integration and there's a uh, uh, heading called API keys. So if you select API keys in this particular example, um, you can see there's the default API key um, and this is, this is really important to, uh, to, I guess, to understand because this default API key was created for KSQL DB to have access to uh, the Confluent Kafka resource as well. So now we know that KSQL DB is using this API key to access Apache Kafka, um, which is interesting to be able to look at that from an audit perspective to see what KSQL DB is doing um, and how it's accessing Kafka as well. But in this scenario, we're going to add a new key. And uh, once again, we'll just keep it as global access 
for this scenario and click on next. Then um, take a note of this case as a demo instance. So I'm happy to do that, but um, I'm just going to call it k sql db dash key, for example. Um, and I'll just give it a description. And this is really important because once you save this key, you can no longer see the secret anymore. So basically, um, you want to be able to, to take a copy of those keys, which I'll do right now because we're going to use that later on. So that is my key and that is my secret. This, uh, this instance will be deleted once, uh, <laughs> once this is all completed. Um, and now um, I'm going to save that and you'll see another list of the, the API keys that I've been using. So now I've got this case equal TV key that's been created. So hopefully you guys are following along with that. All right. So now that uh, we've created the API key, um, the next area we're going to look at, of course, if you if you're advanced enough to create your own producers and consumers, that is totally totally great. Um, but in this case, what we're going to do is look at some pre-configured connectors to get some data into the Confluent platform. So just by navigating to data integration and to connectors, uh, you can see there's a whole range of connectors available for Confluent Cloud. Some of these, uh, when you can see this little section down here that says fully managed, um, that, that actually means they're fully managed within Confluent Cloud. And um, the one that we're going to use today, which is actually one of my favorite connectors, if you do a search for data gen, um, you'll see this data gen source connector, which is also fully managed. Uh, so if I look at that data gen and then I, I search for that, then I click on the data gen source connector. This is uh, what a fully managed connector looks like within Confluent Cloud. So basically it gives us a cost to run per hour because obviously there's some compute that is required to run that, uh, that little service. Um, and we're going to go ahead and configure this service to run, um, to run this data gen connector uh, to produce some data for the demo. So I'm going to give it a name. So that's a data gen source connector underscore users. I'm copying and pasting that. And next I want to look at my API keys, uh, which I'll grab from my other window over here. So I want to look at my key, for example, and I'm going to place that in there. And also my secret, which I'm going to paste from there. So that was taken from the API keys above. You can also generate it within here and, and um, you can easily, and I know I fall into the habit of easily clicking on that button that automatically generates it, but it just means there's a key sprawl of API key, keys being created within the cluster. Um, so try and try and use the, the keys that you've created earlier to, to keep it easy to manage. Uh, in this scenario, we're going to say, what topic do we want to send the data? So this is a source connector to producer. We want to, in this topic, we want to choose the user's topic. So we want to place the data into the user's topic. We want to change the format. We want to make sure the data is in JSON. And uh, we're going to select a quick start um, sample set of messages, which has different samples for different use cases. Uh, and this particular one, we're using a user's sample. And we want to place that into the user's topic. We're going to do a max interval of 1,000 uh, milliseconds, and we're going to run one task. And that's basically it. So that's my data gen source connector. I'll click Next. And then um, that's uh, that's the traditional sort of Kafka post URL setting up a connector um, JSON configuration script, uh, but it's all done through the UI uh, in, in Confluent Cloud. And then just click Launch. And we'll let that run in the background. And you'll see that says provisioning. So that will take a little bit of time to provision. Uh, so while we're waiting, we're, we're going to add another one of these connectors. So once again, click Add Connector again and data gen source connector should already be selected. So if we select the data gen source connector again, so we're just going to repeat that step, but this time we're going to create one into the stocks topic. So I'll give it a name, copy and paste that, data gen connector underscore stocks. Uh, once again, I'm gonna use my API key that I created earlier. So from step number five, and my secret, all right. And this time we're, we're going to place it in the stocks topic. And there's my stocks topic. Uh, once again, the output message is format is JSON. We're going to select the quick start um, 
data details. There's a bit of a typo. It says stocks, but it's actually stock underscore trades. It's the same data set, but, um, but that's the one that we're going to select for quick start. So it's stock trades and um, max interval 1,000 milliseconds and one task again. And once you're happy with that, click on next. And then you'll get to a review section. So um, just to review your details there and click launch. And congratulations if you guys have done that. Just created two source uh, data generators running in the cloud. Um, really simply without having to curl anything into Kafka Connect to do that. Um, so that was really easy to, to do. So these are still provisioning. They'll take a little bit of time. Um, and while they're going through that, we can go through and start to look at uh, some of the next steps in the tutorial. Um, these actually, yeah, in, in this instance, they, they take a li little bit of time. But if I go back and while we're waiting, waiting for those to provision, um, we'll be able to see the data in the user's topic. But uh, some of the other connectors I just wanted to touch on here as well, just while we're waiting for those is so if we look at some of the, the newly released, I saw some newly released uh, integrations to things like the Azure portal here as well. You can see there's both source and sync connectors for Cosmos DB. Um, that's a very common um, connector there as well. There's things around the likes of Snowflake, for example, or Elasticsearch, which you see quite a bit, that has a fully managed um, connector that you can spin up really, really quickly. And just while we're sort of still waiting for these connectors to provision, so it do take a little bit of time, um, the other area I wanted to touch on was the clients um, tab over here as well. So you don't have to click on this. I'll just walk you through it. But uh, essentially, the clients tab enables you to get uh, really quick access to um, to see exactly what your producers and consumers are, are doing with the environment. So you can see I've got one producer at this point, which is at this point still the KSQL DB server that's that's running uh, to that topic that I mentioned earlier. There's one consumer that's kind of running there. Uh, but if I click on the, the new clients tab, you'll be able to see some options here around how to configure other connectors, whether the producers or consumers using other programming languages. So for example, you might have a Go, um, you might be familiar with Go and want to connect your environment using the Go language. So here's a, here's a good way to teach you how to, I guess, bootstrap to Confluent Cloud um, and copy that configuration with your API keys there as well, and then follow through with um, some of those applications to, to create a Go uh, producer or consumer. There's also obviously the REST API and a great tutorial to connecting to Confluent Cloud using the REST API protocol uh, and some great tutorials to get started with that. There's another tab that I had open just to, um, in reference for this, there's a new developer portal that Confluent released. I'm not sure if, if you're familiar with the developer portal, but there's some great um, context in the developer portal around setting up different build pipelines. So whether it's Java, Scala, .NET, uh, and then running through some of these tutorials. So for example, you might want to connect a, a Node.js environment to Confluent. This will take you through how to set up a complete application in Node.js. Um, there's a whole bunch of other great resources in here. There was one, the other one was around um, KSQL DB. Uh, which I was looking at earlier. So some courses around KSQL DB to further enhance your skills and how to do some more complex things with KSQL DB. But this is something I'll paste in the chat window just for reference there as well. All right, great. So I'm gonna go back here and it's perfect timing. Now I can see the data source connectors are now running, the data generators are running within my Confluent instance. So continuing on to step number nine, um, when I go to my topics tab over here and click on my users topic, I should be able to see some messages. There you go. There's a little line of messages there. So just starting to come through as we're, as we're speaking. Um, and if I click on the messages tab, for example, I should be able to see messages coming through. So now that data generator is, um, getting me some messages and you can see that there's a users topic. Um, it's generating, for example, a registered time. There's a user with the user ID with the username there, for example, uh, a region, and then a gender in this particular data set. Um, so, so now that data is all flowing through, and there's obviously you can see that, um, yeah, the, the different it's it's all in JSON in this particular thing, query. Um, there's also this little button right to the right over there, 
it's uh, next to that hamburger button there just down the bottom. You can just change the view there to have a look at that those uh, fields coming through so you can see the, the region, the gender, the user ID, uh, just a better way to visualize that data there as well. Excellent. All right, so now that we've got some data coming through, we've got a couple of topics. We've got a stocks topic and we've got a users topic. So we've got two sets of sources producing data into Kafka, which is great. So, so now we've got two data sources. Um, uh, and you know, it's, if, it's great to produce that data in, but the, the next step is to start to use KSQL DB um, to be able to create some sort of enrichments, to do some joins, um, looking at doing some, some table queries, uh, looking at doing some aggregations on top of the data, um, and then to start to enrich and filter that data as it's flowing through the stream. So uh, the next step is to go through and say, let's click on the KSQL DB tab over here. And you can see I've got my KSQL DB application running. I think you can have as many of these as you like. Um, but if I click on my KSQL DB application, um, it takes me to a editor, which is a SQL-like editor where we can run SQL queries within KSQL DB across those two different topics. So the very first thing we have to do is right now, what we have is we have a user's topic or a user's um, stream of information and we've got, uh, a, sorry, a, a stocks stream of information. So there's a stream of information coming through. Um, but what we want to do is we want to create a KSQL DB stream. So um, KSQL DB, and if I copy this particular statement over there, what we're going to do is we're going to basically set a schema within KSQL DB. I'm going to create this new stream called stocks underscore stream. Um, now this is a stream that is going to consume from um, the stocks topic that we mentioned earlier in a value format of JSON. And it's going to allow us to query that data as it's going through the system. So right now there's no streams, there's only the KSQL DB processing one. So we can't really query the data until we create this stream. So the first thing we want to do is I'm going to copy and paste that, but the syntax is pretty simple. It's basically create stream stocks underscore stream. Then we're going to specify the, um, the schema associated with the, the data coming through on that stocks topic. So you can see the quantity, the symbol, the price, for example, is an integer, um, user ID is a varchar. Uh, and there's a, there's a few tutorials on how to set this up and how to set up streams, but there's a couple of really good link, links in there around streams and tables and data definitions as well. Um, but for this scenario, we're just going to create a brand new stream. We're going to leave the offset at the latest. So I want to start the stream as of now, and it's going to use uh, rocks TV under the cover to go through and um, create that stream. So I'm going to click run query. And you can see down here, status equals success. And we've created this stream called stocks underscore stream. And uh, to visualize that, what we're going to do is following this guide is we'll go over to the streams tab over there. And now we'll have a new stream there called stocks underscore stream. So what we want to do is we want to say, click on stock stream. Um, it'll give us some information. What's the replication factor, one partition. Um, the serialization for key and value, and then the schema associated with that particular key. So go ahead and click on query stream. And basically that's just going to say select star from stocks underscore stream. And uh, David mentioned earlier pull queries versus push queries. What, uh, what the difference really is there is um, this emit changes is basically saying this is a push query. Keep giving me the results back. Keep pushing the data back in real time as it's happening. I want to see that stream coming through. So select star from stock stream, and you can see you can see that stream has now been um, is now coming in real time, and there's all the information there. So I can see my my side, my quantity, my symbol, my price, all of the details associated with that streaming information, and that's as it's going through. That's really good. So now we've we've created this uh, this stream. I'm going to click stop on that because um, I don't need to run that anymore. And now we've created a new um, a new stream of information. The next step is what we want to do is we want to create um, a table. So a table is a little bit different to a stream. A stream is like a, a querying on top of live streaming of data. Whereas a table is, is more like a, if you're familiar with compacted topics, it's, it's more familiar with a, 
kind of like a compacted topic. It's um, essentially creating a, a table of information, um, keeping the latest records on that particular table. So what we want to do here is copy that, that statement. So instead of create stream, we're going to say create table and we're going to create, um, and that's the only difference is we're creating stream or table, but in this case, we're creating a new table called users and, um, and the user ID, we're specifying the primary key. So that's basically where we're doing the compaction in this particular case. It's not really compaction, but it's kind of, it's exactly kind of like compaction where it's um, keeping the latest figure based on the primary key. In this case, it's the user ID, um, the registered time, the gender, the region, and then we're going to give it a topic name uh, and then the value format there as well. If I could run query, I'm going to leave that at the latest value. And now if I hover over to my tables, I'll be able to see a table there called users. Uh, click on users, the users table, then you can see um, some details around that. Once again, you can see the schema. Uh, and then if you click on query table, we'll be able to get the latest information per key on that particular user. So for example, if I hover over there, you'll be, you'll only ever see um, the latest update for that particular user. So um, we can see here, for example, the region ID, the gender, uh, all of that information related to that particular user. Um, you can, yeah, so I've left the offset there as latest instead of having it there as uh, the earliest offset there as well. All right, so now, um, so what we've done so far is we've created, we've created streams and tables um, but we haven't really queried them yet. We, we've kind of just created a, a stream, um, which is almost like a, um, a yeah, a, a stream of information on top of the the particular table that uh, the top of the stream that's coming through on Kafka DB Kafka, sorry, on the Kafka topic that we created earlier. So now what we want to do is we want to create a persistent query, um, and basically we want to be able to join the two sets of the table and the stream together. So I like to think of the table as a database CDC type record where it's always got some sort of enrichment information about a particular um, entity. So in this case, the table has a user ID, it has um, the gender and it has the region associated with that particular user. Whereas the stream is more like information that's constantly flowing through. In this case, it's stock trades. It could be something like web logs, for example. But, uh, but now we have the stock trade stream of, stream of information that's flowing through. And what we want to do is we want to, we want to be able to select um, all of these different fields from the users um, table. And uh, we want to be able to join that with, um, with the stream table there as well. So stock stream, we want to join um, and, and match on the user ID for the stock stream with the users dot user ID from the users table. So I'll go ahead and copy that um, and paste that in there. But actually what I will do is I'm going to, I'm going to drop the first line. So I'm not going to create the new stream yet. So as soon as I run this, this is a, it's non-persistent query. So right now it's basically a non-persistent query, but essentially what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm running this query and it's going to run that as a select statement. And you can see the results here. So basically it's done that join. So it's done the user ID. It's done um, all of the information from the user's information, but also from the stock information. And it's done that join or that ETL on that user ID field. Um, so right now, this is just a query that's running, um, but it's not saved anywhere. It's, it's still running in memory. Eventually, it's going to run out of memory. Um, so what we want to do is we want to create a stream of information as stocks underscore enriched. Um, this is actually going to persist this query and KSQL DB is going to keep running this query, uh, but it's going to write the results to a topic called stocks underscore enriched in this particular case. So if I stop that and then I go run query, it's going to create that stocks underscore enriched table there as well. So hey, um, John, it's already interrupt. Um, we've got about five more minutes left, right. uh, unfortunately, in the workshop. So yeah. Because I, I also want to make sure that we highlight maybe a quick view of the stream lineage uh, and then sure. um, a reminder to clean up uh, any resources after you've run through the workshop yourself. 
Sure. Okay. Thanks, David. Uh, good point. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, I will uh, fast forward a little bit, but I think that was most of it from there. Uh, there's a couple of use cases more on fraud if you want to continue on later. But basically, yeah, from here on in, we've created this stocks enriched stream. Um, if I select stuff from my stocks enriched, you'll be able to see all of that information flowing through. And um, so now we can, you know, we can see all of that enriched information. Um, the other area is if we look at KSQL DB and then click on the flow button, now we get a nice kind of flow of how we're seeing the users table and then the stock stream, um, creating this new stream called stocks underscore enriched. Uh, and then if you follow on and copy and paste the, the aggregate data um, to run that aggregate, which I'll do now really quickly, actually, I'll just run that aggregate data to the next step there. So we've created the stocks enriched stream, um, and, but we want to create this table aggregate of data as well. So now we want to be able to say create a table, which is the number of stocks bought. Um, and we want to count the symbol here as total times bought. And then we want to do this group by symbol. So if I run that table query there, now we'll have another aggregate of information there. So if I go uh, select star from, star from um, number of stocks bought and it changes, we'll be able to get an aggregate over a, a period of time with, uh, with that information there once that comes through. So now we've got this total times bought, which equals four or one. Um, all of that information has now been aggregated with KSQL DB. Just to highlight this, there's a whole bunch of functions within KSQL DB that are really, really useful. So whether it's aggregation table type functions, whether it's masking functions, uh, regex type functions, yeah, lots of, lots of different functions. So I'll paste this link, but KSQL DB um, functions there as well. There's, there's a lot of those functions. But uh, moving on to the workshop, um, final thing I want to show you from a KSQL DB perspective is basically the same as the aggregate. So we're doing a stocks purchase today, but we want to window this. So we, we want to look at a window tumbling size of five minutes. So we want to look and, and group this by a window start time and a window finish time to look at how many stocks were purchased today um, by symbol and then on account then over a five minute window. And if I look at that and then I run that query, oops, there's a bit of a typo here as well. If you see that, get rid of that comma there uh, after quantity and then run that query. And we've now got this other stream of information called stocks purchased today. And you'll be able to see that aggregated within a five minute window purchasing section there when that comes through. So obviously it's five minutes, but um, yeah, so we'll be able to see that information there. So there's the window start and then the window end. And uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch more, but in the interest of time, I will um, get to the cleanup, but I wanted to touch on the stream lineage piece here as well. So now we get this, uh, which was released today, but now we get this end-to-end -end view of all of the data that's flowing through Confluent Platform. So you can see a data gen source connector, your, your stock, connector there and users table. You can see they're writing to topics and persistence of storage. Um, you can see the different consumers consuming from there. So I've got, now I've got a KSQL DB application called Enriched, Stocks Enriched. Then I've got uh, the stocks number of times bought and they're persistent to topics there as well. If you click on that, you'll be able to get a, a whole bunch more uh, messages and schema and, and the query associated with, with all of that information. All right, so um, let's go through and clean this up before the other session ends. So just to just to complete this, and once again, you have access to this for um, for quite a bit of time to go back and run this. But if you want to clean this session up with me, we can walk through that now. So basically, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the KSQL DB workshop and um, click on the KSQL DB tab just to clean this up. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but there's a little button called delete. Um, then under actions, so just in case equal to be click on delete, then you have to copy or type in the name of the, uh, the application that's running. So case equal DB, click on continue, and then that will go through and delete that case equal DB application, uh, and all of the topics associated with that. 
Uh, the next thing is we want to clean up the, the connectors. So I'm going to go to data integration connectors. And uh, the way you delete this is you have to actually click on the connector there, each connector. And there's a delete button. So click on the delete tab. Once again, you're going to type in the name or copy and paste the name of the connector. Click confirm. Uh, I'll do that one more time while that one is deleting. So run through and delete that. Delete the users table. And finally, we're going to go through and delete the cluster as well. So if I go to cluster overview, cluster settings, and then go down all the way down the bottom. So on the cluster settings, click on delete cluster. And then the, the cluster name there as well. So you're just going to type that in and copy and paste it. All right, one minute over. Sorry, David. <laughs> but hopefully that's um, that's a good workshop. And these these uh, sometimes can take a little bit longer. Um, but uh, yeah, that that was um, the case SQL DB workshop. Still have access to all of this information. Um, I've posted some links in the windows, and um, yeah, I'll just hand back to David to, to close off. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, thanks, Johnny. That was that was great. And yeah, unfortunately, the workshop was uh, was pretty condensed. Um, so you know, please follow, continue along if you hadn't done that, and um, and and then of course spin down your your um, resources afterwards. But uh, the credit that we you get for free uh, should last you well over a, a month. Uh, you know, there's quite a bit there to use. Um, you might want to, if you're not using KSQL DB, you know, in between sessions, maybe just go ahead and uh, delete that though, so you can kind of keep your spend running longer. But yeah, um, all those instructions are at that URL. That's not going to change. Uh, the links that Johnny shared uh, are, you know, in the screen. So go ahead and maybe copy and paste those. But yeah, thank you very much for your time and attention. Uh, and please, if there's any questions or anything like that, I'll type my email. And maybe Johnny, if you're going to type yours, um, we'd be more than happy to chat. Um, we work on the solutions engineering team, so we're sort of the technical <laughs> side of the equation, and uh, you know we're more than happy to, again, answer any questions or anything like that. So, thank you. I uh, appreciate appreciate it. And if you'd like to stay on for a bit longer, and, and maybe you're still running the workshop and you've got some questions or something, please go ahead. I'll still I'll keep this up for a bit longer. Um, but of course, if you if you want to leave to go to other sessions, I think the next one starts in like 10 minutes or something like that. Um, I think it's a bit of a break right now. So I'll stay on, um, I'll put myself on mute, but yeah, I'll be watching the chat room. Uh, and again, thank you. And thank you, Johnny, that was really good. Uh, yeah, I see still a few people on, uh, some people leaving. Um, again, please ask any questions. Uh, I'll stay on for as long as anybody would like. Um, I don't have another Zoom session until another two hours from now. So um, have a nice little break. Uh, more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, hopefully you all are enjoying the API, D, API Days um, conference. Uh, I know I've always enjoyed uh, my first one that I went to is about four years ago, and I've been to everyone since. So it's um, really good. I enjoy the agenda. Thanks, Yojas. Appreciate your time. And again, another quick plug for the Kafka Summit, which is going on. Uh, Unfortunately, it's going on in the U.S. time zone, uh, so uh, but everything's recorded, so it's easy to watch. We just had the APAC Kafka Summit uh, two months ago, so it was the first Kafka Summit ever in APAC. Uh, it was great. We had about 4,000 uh, attendees, uh, virtual attendees, um, so that was really good. And um, yeah, go ahead. It's uh, kafkasummit.io. Uh, let me just click that, kafkasummit.io. Again, totally free, of course, uh, and, and uh, so over 75 sessions. Sorry, I've got some dogs in the background. I might just mute myself.
Yeah, so uh, again, hopefully you are all able to um, have, you know, follow it along fairly far into the set of um, kind of uh, steps. So, uh, you know, if you kind of just copy paste, it goes pretty quickly, but if you sort of copy paste and then um, kind of just look at the results and explore a little bit, you, know, you can probably spend about a good solid hour uh, at least running through things. But at the end of that, you kind of have a, should have a really good uh, idea of how uh, KSQL DB really fits into the whole event streaming ecosystem uh, by allowing you to transform, do real-time ETL, do windowing uh, stateful queries, uh, you know, push pull queries. Uh, it's got a full REST API if you want to query, send queries, or do um, you know, read from 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 it. Um, one thing that, of course, that that I found uh, a little bit, you know, you, you have to use uh, the right tools is that the um, Endpoints use HTTP2, uh, so sometimes the popular um, REST endpoints that we use don't have HTTP2 yet, because uh, that provides for the ability to do streaming data, streaming queries. I just wanted to close my door because my dogs are annoying. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we still have actually a good number of people still in the room. So uh, maybe you're all still running the uh, workshop. Uh, that's great. Um, again, hopefully things are running quite smoothly. We've uh, we've all checked internally at Confluent. We've checked through the workshop a number of times, and we're we're doing a few workshops this week. Actually, at some of our uh, some of our uh, other customers, uh, and uh, so yeah, they should be quite uh, concise, and there shouldn't be any uh, any issues or any errors with that. Um, but again, if you have any questions or you get stuck, uh, I'll be here for a bit longer. I might just share my screen. I've got a few links that might be interesting to everyone. Um, one second. Um, so you might be interested in, um, oh, there we go. Oh, sorry. So uh, if you'd like some additional free credit uh, on your instance, uh, just go into uh, the sidebar, the little icon, the menu icon, and the billing page, and then enter in CC 60 COMM. Uh, you'll get an extra $60 of credit. So that should last you like another week or so uh, of working on things if you're kind of building KSQL DB applications. Um, that expires if you don't, if you, if, if this, this offer, offer will last until 31st of this year. So um, please go ahead and grab those if you'd like. Uh, yeah, just another reminder to go ahead and uh, when you're done with the workshop to clean up the resources, uh, of course. Uh, so that you don't have those running and just um, kind of using up any credit you have. Um, and uh, Johnny mentioned the developer.confluent.io site. Uh, again, it's a great resource. It, we uh, kind of relaunched that, uh, let's see, about a month ago, three or four weeks ago. Uh, it's got a ton of great tutorials, a lot of really good videos. The nice thing too is that um, the, the, the team has put them all into bite-sized chunks. So rather than maybe like a 60 minute, 70 minute video that covers everything in the sun, um, they've taken that 70 minute video and they turned it into about six or seven little miniature ver you know, ones all put into a nice uh, interface. So you can go ahead and uh, kind of consume things in, in kind of bite-sized pieces. You can bookmark each, each section. Um, it's, all, it's got all the text and any links and things like that that are relevant. Uh, so yeah, it really makes it easy to learn Kafka basics, uh, K streams basics, uh, 
KSQL DB, basics, uh, connect, all sorts of the components. And you know, really gives you a, a super easy and approachable way of learning uh, Kafka, the entire ecosystem of things. Uh, there's a ton of free books as well. Uh, so we've got, oh, sorry, my mouse is very jumpy. Uh, we've got four books that are all available for download for free. Um, they're all uh, O'Reilly books. So you're getting, you know, really nice, uh, really uh, uh, a lot of great material. So Kafka, The Definitive Guide, um, Making Sense of Stream Processing. Uh, Jay Kreps, or the, our CEO, wrote the I Heart Logs back at his LinkedIn days. And then um, Designing Event-Driven Systems by Ben uh, Sutford, uh, which is a really great book on patterns around event-driven uh, systems. I think the next sessions will be starting soon. Um, and so yeah, again, just go to cnfl.io slash book dash bundle and uh, go ahead and grab those books. Some great uh, holiday reading. Uh, if any of you have kids, I think school holidays are coming up soon. So, you know, what else better to do than read about uh, event streaming on your time off? Actually, I don't recommend that. Do something more fun. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much. I'm just going to leave it on uh, probably on that slide. Yeah, on that slide just for right now. Just type that URL into this chat. All right. Well, I hope the hope you all have uh, a great conference, and uh, yeah, hopefully you learn some interesting things. I'll be uh, leaving in another minute or so. So yeah, any questions? Please go ahead and ask. Uh, in the chat or in the q and I'll be on for at least another minute or so. Uh, there's one more question. I'm happy to stay a bit longer. Um, I'll just speak this one out. Uh, so uh, thanks, Chanda. Um, so the question was, is the cloud version that we are we try in the session is the same as Kafka Confluent that installed on PC? Um, oh, so in terms of uh, connectors. Um, so uh, in the cloud, uh, those connectors that Johnny was highlighting uh, are the ones are the, they're the fully managed connectors. So uh, in uh, to download, I'd say there's probably over 300 connectors available. I think on GitHub alone, there's a few hundred uh, you can you can find on GitHub, uh, and then of course Confluent has um, Confluent um, Hub to uh, to download connectors. Um, so uh, in Confluent Cloud, I think we've got about thirty or forty connectors that are fully managed, meaning you just have to click uh, and and uh, put in some configuration and run them. Um, but of course, there's over three hundred connectors available um, out there. So there are instructions to if you need to run uh, some self-managed connectors. So again, some of those other hundreds of connectors, um, you can quickly spin up a connect cluster uh, either on your laptop or uh, in the cloud, uh, you know, Azure, GCP, uh, AWS, and then install those connectors in your own uh, connect cluster. And then of course that connect cluster connects directly to uh, Confluent Cloud. So uh, again, that's a very common pattern where uh, somebody has either created their own connector uh, or they want to run you know, maybe one of those other you know, hundreds of connectors that are not yet managed in Confluent Cloud. In saying that, probably every month we add another five to six connectors, um, maybe you know, four or five connectors every month. So uh, we, we kind of 
uh, add them as fast as that we as, as fast as we can. So ho hopefully, Sari, that answered your uh, question around connectors. So you, I guess, uh, maybe also you can any connector that's available, you can of course connect that to Confluent Cloud if you want. Uh, um, just that you might mean you have to run your own connect cluster to do that. And there is instructions for doing that. Uh, let me go to the Confluent site really quick and uh, just put those instructions for connecting um, your own uh, connect cluster. Just trying to find those instructions. Um, here we go. So here's for connecting to external systems. I'll just put this into the chat. So if you jump there, there's a lot of instructions. We have, I think we've got about 30 or 40 examples uh, alone um, in there. And then you can kind of see how you can connect uh, to those. And if, if one of those doesn't answer your question, it should give you the, the guidelines for um, you know using another connector in a very similar way. Great. All right. Well, I'm sure many of you want to jump to the other sessions now. Um, you know, we've uh, been on a little, little bit. Uh, so thank you all. Um, again, I'll probably stay on until the top of the hour, so next three minutes. Uh, but please go ahead at any time, just jump off and, uh, you know, join any of the other sessions or kind of get on with the rest of your day. Uh, I'll be here for another three minutes. So yeah, please, any more questions, go ahead and ask. I'll get, get myself on mute again for a little bit. I just realized um, the link that I sent uh, Ferry um, was about uh, other connectors. So the one that I just sent you right now, or the one I just put in the chat room right now, is uh, the one uh, for how to connect, you know, to create your own connect cluster, uh, and then connect that to Confluent Cloud. And then, of course, that will allow you to run any connector, any of those hundreds of connectors that I talked about earlier. So it talks about setting up a local connect worker. Um, you know, you can either do that in a standalone mode or in a server mode or distributed mode. Sorry. Uh, and then as soon as you get that running, again, you can run that on your laptop, on a data center, on uh, a cloud, uh, anything like that, uh, in your own self-managed VPC. Effectively, uh, gives you all the configuration. You you put in your uh, as Johnny showed earlier when you launch a new cluster you get a bootstrap server and you get you create a an API key and a secret or and a password sorry just like Johnny showed you so you go ahead and you put in those uh, bootstrap servers uh, which is your URL and then you put it you create a custom API key and a secret uh, for this connect cluster um, give it the right permissions and then effectively uh, that's that's about it and then of course when you install a connector. You also have to um, put in a similar, um, or sorry, for each connector you put in, you put in the similar sort of credentials into there. So effectively, you create an API key and secret uh, for every connector, so that you can kind of manage them in a very, you know, secure way. All right. Well, it's three o'clock. Um, uh, yeah. Great. Thanks, Chandan. I'm really happy to hear that uh, that you got some good value.